Right now, that officer is being held without bail after being formally charged with distributing child pornography. Michael Harding was arrested by the Department of Homeland Security and taken before a federal judge this morning. News Channel 5's Christina Noche was inside the courtroom, and she joins us now from Fort Pierce with more on the disturbing images investigators say they found. Well, inside the courtroom, Harding sat wearing navy blue jail scrubs, his hands handcuffed in front of him, looking down most of the time. He told the judge he has less than $3,000 collectively in his bank accounts. And so the judge declared him indigent and appointed him a public defender. Uh, this morning, Harding, for the first time, was formally charged with one count of sending and receiving child pornography that has a minimum sentence of five years, a maximum of 20, and a second charge of possession of child pornography. Pornography, also a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Now, take a look at this picture. The picture you're looking at right now is a picture of Officer Harding when he was named Officer of the Year back in 2001 when he worked for Fort Pierce. Now, special agents with Homeland Security arrested Harding yesterday. Now, according to the affidavit, Harding used a messenger app called Kick. It uses Wi Fi to send photos and videos, so it's more anonymous. It doesn't list your number, but it does use Wi Fi and then also track. Your IP addresses. According to the affidavit, the videos on that messenger showed preteen girls performing sex acts on adult men, some videos involving children as young as preschool age. The affidavit also says when they searched Harding's home, a thumb drive was found there showing additional videos of both young boys and girls, some as young as six or seven years old. Now, also in court, the judge did ask Harding if he has children. Uh, Harding says he is married, has three children, nine, five, and six months old. At this point, he is being held on no bond until they have a bond hearing next Wednesday. As of right now, grand jury already set for October 1st. Reporting in Fort Pierce, Christina Noche, WPTV News Channel 5. Good morning. As you know, an officer with the Fort St. Lucie Police Department was arrested yesterday by Homeland Security Investigations. I've been asked to refer all questions about the federal investigation to Homeland Security Investigations, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the documents that were filed with the courts. We have worked in full cooperation with the federal investigation up to this point, and I'm going to continue to cooperate with Homeland Security Investigations and the U.S. Attorney's Office. I do not want my actions to interfere or in any way prejudice the outcome of this investigation. Therefore, I'm going to ask you to please refrain from asking me to comment on the criminal investigation. These charges are very serious, and I think it goes without saying that this type of behavior is not and will not be tolerated in this agency. Mr. Harding was placed on administrative leave without pay pending the outcome of the investigation. I'll answer any questions you have. What was his role at the department, like currently? I understand he's a road patrol officer, but did, um, did he have any other duties or contact with kids? As far as I know, it was a road patrol officer on midnight shift. Okay. So not like the explorers or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Can you tell us, Chief, a little bit about his time here? Um, was he a good officer? Did he have a good record with you all? Yeah, Mr. Harding uh, had no disciplinary actions with the department, and uh, he has received several accommodations, uh, a letter of accommodation for teamwork, a letter of appreciation for referrals to the Juvenile Restorative Justice Initiative, um, an Achievement Award. Uh, he got a Do Your Job Award for conducting a traffic stop resulting in the arrest of a burglar. Um, and that's, that's pretty much... But no discipline. No discipline. Obviously, we know from the stories you covered that if, if these allegations are true, these types of people exist in our society in all sorts of different kinds of jobs. But for you as the chief, I mean, the fact, if, if the allegations are true that he was an officer, can you talk a little bit about if that's disturbing to you or, you know? Yeah, it's, it, if, if these allegations are true, this is, is very disturbing because the, the public puts a tremendous amount of trust in, in their police officers. And, and actually, that's our... That's how we get the job done is through public trust. 
the other 280 employees of this department work very hard every day to gain that public trust, maintain that public trust in, in, in this particular type thing erodes the hard work of a lot of men and women who are very dedicated to a community. So yeah, it is very disturbing, disappointing. And I don't know if this is something you can answer if it's too close to the investigation, but in the documents it said that some of this was done while he was on duty. Um, can you speak to that? Is that something that sort of takes it to another level for you? Like I said earlier, I've been asked by Homeland Security Investigations and the U.S. Attorney not to comment on the investigation. They would like to handle that themselves. Does he get paid while he's on? It's, it's unpaid. Unpaid. Yes. So he is on an unpaid leave. Yes. As what, effective now. Well, we initially put him on paid administrative leave when we learned of the investigation early yesterday morning, and then that was changed to unpaid administrative leave when he was charged, arrested. So he was on the um, overnight shift. Did he have any other duties or even maybe off-duty uh, activities that involved contact with children that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. What made him stick out in your mind to, I guess, hire him? I understand he was uh, accomplished at Corpus PD, but did anything stick out in your mind? Considering? He was an accomplished police officer. With, and he went through our hiring process, and, and he did very well on all, all the different things we do in, in a hiring process, uh, psychological evaluations, you know, polygraphs, all that was checked out fine. Um, and he you know, was an accomplished officer living in the county. So it's safe to say this came as a shock to everyone here? Absolutely. Okay. Um, is there, yeah, so you are, I know you can't comment on an investigation, but um, I assume there's going to be an internal affairs yeah. investigation at some point? Yeah. How does all that work? I can, I can briefly just acknowledge you know, Florida statute limits what I can say about internal affairs investigations. Um, I'm not trying to dodge your questions here, but I, I don't want to mess any of this up. I want this to, you know, to be very just and, and happen the way it's supposed to happen. Um, I have initiated an internal affairs investigation, and I have told it, which means I have suspended that internal affairs investigation until the criminal investigation is completed, at which time we'll reopen the internal affairs investigation and continue on. And is there any kind of local criminal investigation on your part? Criminal investigation? This, this case is, is federal. It's yeah. totally federal. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for coming. And uh, if anything else develops, we will certainly let you know.